I'm going to read a bit from the start of The Dead, uh, which is the second book in my new horror series, The Enemy, which is basically, to sum it up, it's kids versus zombies. Everybody over the age of 14 has been hit by a disease which has either killed them or caused them to behave like a classic cannibal zombie. So adults are trying to eat kids and kids are trying to splatter adults' brains up the walls. Um, and The Dead starts in a boy's boarding school where they're having to deal with some of the teachers. Mr. Hewitt was crawling through the broken window, sliding over the ledge on his belly, hands groping at the air, fingers clenching and unclenching, arms waving as if he was trying to swim breaststroke. In the half-light, Jack could just make out the look on his pale yellowing face, a stupid look, no longer human, eyes wide and staring tears of blood dribbling from under his eyelids, tongue lolling out from between cracked and swollen lips, skin covered with boils and sores. Jack stood there frozen, the cricket bat held tight in sweating hands. He knew he should step forward and whack Mr Hewitt as hard as he could in the head, but his right arm ached all the way down. He'd been swinging the bat all night and the last teacher he'd hit had jarred his shoulder. Now it hurt just to hold the bat, which felt like a lead weight in his hands. And if you want to know whether Jack does manage to splatter Mr. Hewitt's brains up the walls, you'll have to buy the book, I'm afraid. Why did you decide to write books for children? I was looking around for something I could write that my kids would like. And I was trying to think of some a sort of action adventure type story. And I was approached completely out of the blue by um, the organization that looks after James Bond. And they said they were looking for someone to write a James Bond books for children about James Bond when he was a younger boy. And I just thought that's a perfect thing for me to write. I've always been a huge James Bond fan. And I thought, well, yeah, this project has been offered to me on a plate. I would be a fool to say no. Luckily, turned out kids did like reading it. And, um, and I found I really liked writing for kids. So I carried on. Do you have messages for your readers in your books? Yeah, if you read my books backwards, it says, believe in Satan. No, um, it's a very tricky thing. What you, the last thing you want to do when you're writing a book is for kids to think they're being taught a lesson. When you write a book, you do, there are things you want to say. There are ways that I feel about the, the world, about what's right and what's wrong, which I can put into the books. And the great thing about writing James Bond books is my books are set in the early 30s, which was a really interesting time historically. And there was a lot going on which you know, affected 20th century politics in a big way. And the books are an interesting way of actually telling kids a bit about this. But beyond that, no. I mean, it's just standard messages that probably most books are about, which is the value of friendship, um, loyalty, honesty, that kind of, that kind of stuff. This is a question from Tara, age 16. What, in your opinion, are the main differences between writing for adults and for children, and which do you prefer? The only things I've changed from writing my adult books was there's not so much swearing. There's a little bit, and you can try and sneak a bit in. And um, you don't, I don't really want to write about sex. For children. children don't want to read about sex. Well, some do. What was your favourite book when you were growing up? Anything really in which the hero had a sword, I was happy. But I also read uh, sort of uh, comedy books. There was a great book, uh, a character called Professor Brainstorm. There were a lot of books written about him by a guy called Norman Hunter, and that I do remember reading those and really laughing. And in fact, I've, I, they've reprinted some of them recently, and I, I read some to my kids, and I was very pleased to see that they also still found it funny. What was your favourite and worst parts of writing book, of writing books? <laughs> The worst part of writing a book is it takes an extraordinarily long time. It takes me about a year to write one of these books. So I, you know, I sometimes I get to the end of the year and I think, well, what did I do this year? And I think, oh yes, I was sat in my little room at home at my computer doing this for a year till I had 90,000 words written and rewritten and rewritten and ready to be read. And in the process of writing a book, you are stuck there by yourself and you slowly sort of degenerate into a sort of monster. You don't want to speak to anyone, you don't want to answer the phone, you don't want to go out. You spend your whole time 
in your head with these stories churning around trying to fix things and people will talk to you and they will realise that I'm not listening. And, you know, you end up not changing your clothes, you sit there in your underpants, you haven't had a bath for three weeks trying to write this book. Um, which is also the best part about writing a book, <laughs> is you can sit in your underpants and do what you like because you're there, you're there by yourself and you can do what you like. That's a fantastic freedom to think, well, I can write whatever I like today, I can make up whatever I want. Have any critics made you cry? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily not. Because uh, doing what I do, you have to accept that people are out there criticising. And it's not just critics in newspapers or whatever. It's everybody that reads your book will have an opinion. And some will like it. And some won't like it. There's no way you can please everybody. And I've spent my whole life doing things that people criticise. You can read 20 reviews that give you five stars and say, this is the best book I've ever written. You go on Amazon and look down the, what people say about yeah. your books. You go through and you know, five, five stars, five stars, and you get one star. I didn't like this book, it's rubbish. And that's the only one you remember. It's the only one that sticks in your mind. You think afterwards, why did he only give me one star? But I don't cry, not anymore. Um, did you have lots of adventures like Young Bond when you were young? So did your adventures inspire I was story? forever flying around the world shooting people. No, I mean, I, I'm the same as most writers. Most writers, let's face it, we're, we're wimps, geeks and nerds, and we sit writing things. So the chances of any writer actually really being some kind of tough he-man. I know there are people like Andy McNabb, and Bear Grylls writes books now, and people like that, but most writers are more like me. What inspired you to write about teenagers? These days, teenagers get a very bad press. I wanted to in my books really, particularly the new series, The Enemy, to kind of put the balance right. The series is called The Enemy and the first book is called The Enemy and the enemy in that book is adults, is grown-ups. Because I think actually teenagers are a lot more at risk from us adults than we are really at risk from you lot. I don't think you three are going to terrorise me. So I wanted to write a book where teenagers very much were the heroes and the enemy is very much the adults. So, you know, that's the idea of the book is everyone over 14 is trying to kill you and eat you. Um, and the book is about teenagers working together and helping each other. Uh, if you didn't take up writing, what would you have been? Well, I mean, I've been lucky in that uh, alongside my writing, I've been able to do performing as well. I, do a com I do, have done lots of comedy on TV and I like acting. Um, so, you know, I already do have a kind of secondary career, um, which has been great to be able to flip between the two. Other than that, I've never had a proper job of any kind. Um, I've only ever really sort of worked for myself. But I'm not really in any way suited to try to get a proper job and going and doing a nine to five and going to work for someone else. I just can't do that. So, as I say, I've been very lucky that I have had a secondary career. Molly, age 10, asks, who's your favourite superhero and why? Is James Bond has been described as a superhero without any superpowers. And certainly in some of the films, he's fairly indestructible. Um, but I don't think I could quite get away with saying James Bond. Um, I've always quite liked Batman. What made you change from spy books to zombie books? I've always really loved horror books, particularly when I was your age, horror films. Um, so I thought, well, I'll try that, and if that is a success, then you know I'll, I'll do some more of them. And luckily, the Enemy series got off to a really good start, uh, and I wanted to write more of them. And basically, now that the James Bond people, they need some more books, and they're, they're probably not going to wait for me any longer. So I'm probably have to reluctantly say goodbye to James Bond.